So Unity brought me out to GDC and I'm actually still here in San Francisco while recording this video and I was able to watch Unity's keynote for GDC 2019 live from the Unity San Francisco office and therefore I wanted to make this video where I summarize everything new and exciting from Unity's 2019 keynote in about 10 minutes. So without further ado, buckle up and let's see what they announced. So they began by announcing some numbers such as 45% of the top 1000 mobile games are made with Unity, 33% of the top 20 PC and console publishers use Unity, and finally 70% of the top 10 current games on iOS and Android are made using Unity. These numbers are obviously insane, right? Showing how popular Unity has grown for the past few years and how it keeps growing. Tencent was also very popular this keynote, which people thought was a little bit strange at first, but basically Tencent is this Chinese company that is just about everywhere, owning parts of different companies and products. They also own a big part of Unreal Engine, and the reason they talked about Tencent was because Unity is now partnering up with Tencent Cloud to help make it easier for you to market your games better in the Chinese gaming market. And if you're not aware, basically the Chinese gaming market is like super competitive because it's a massive market. And it's apparently now also going to be a part of Unity's connected games model, which is a new way of making multiplayer games using Unity. And then they start talking about Vivox, which is a voice chat service for online game. And it's also a part of Unity's latest acquisitions using games like Apex Legends. Multiplay was also brought up, so which is a game server hosting solution that Unity bought for not so long ago. I think it's been like a year or so. It was great to hear these being mentioned as everyone wanted to hear more about Unity's connected games and get updates on the new multiplayer technology. And they also talked about monetization and brought up the fact that Unity is now the third biggest ad network behind Google and Facebook, which is mind blowing, right? But it also makes sense because I've seen the rise of people asking me to make tutorials on Unity ads and how to monetize your games and things like that. So it's been rising in popularity pretty clearly. And then Activision was invited on the stage to announce their new game Call of Duty Mobile, made with Unity for mobile platforms. And now to be honest, I don't play a lot of mobile games except for those casual games when I'm bored, but I gotta be honest here, I was actually pretty impressed by how good this looks. They were also talking about how Call of Duty Mobile is running on 60 frames per second, which is very nice point to bring up as it shows Unity's strength in optimization for mobile. They also demoed one of their game's maps in Unity to show how they use dynamic global illumination, full image-based lighting, physics render pipeline, light probes, and all that good stuff. And then Unity announced their new program, which is now in beta, called Game Foundation. Now, Game Foundation will apparently <laughs> allow us to save engineering time by using Unity's pre-built and extensive common game systems and spend more time on other things instead of reinventing the wheel. Also, Lightweight Render Pipeline and the Shader Graph tool are now both production ready in 2019.1. The lightweight render pipeline is used for making mobile-oriented games to improve performance, while Shader Graph is available in both high-definition render pipeline and lightweight to enable artists and developers to make shaders visually instead of scripting them. For people who make AR games using Unity, first and foremost, congratulations, <laughs> because now you have a framework available using AR Foundation. AR Foundation seems to be like a combination of two different features for AR in Unity, so I'm just going to leave a link in the description if you guys want to check it out for full details. Now for you mobile game makers, raise your hands please because here's a feature for you. Unity just announced adaptive performance which is a feature to enable more stable performance while you get to maintain your game's visual and graphical fidelity, the scope, and support for a wide range of devices. Adaptive performance will be coming to Unity as a preview package soon. They didn't say exactly when, but soon. <laughs> soon TM. Now moving on, Other Side Entertainment were invited up on scene to showcase their new game, System Shock 3. Not only did they reveal the trailer of their game, but they also gave us a demo of how they're using the high definition render pipeline. There was this really cool scene where they had a character stuck in a vacuum plastic bag, I think it is, and they moved around the lights to show the glossiness and subsurface scattering. So subsurface scattering or SSR is a feature that specifically gets enabled by HDRP to enable light to travel through certain types of materials like skin and plastic. 
The same effect happens in real life when you put a flashlight behind your finger or ear. And they also talked about the decal system and how it helps them achieve better realism and detail their scene with more props. Now, people were really wanting to see Oddworld, so they finally made an appearance with their trailer. HDRP was also a big part of this demo to show how they're using the latest technology to reach greater visual fidelity. And then Unity starts talking about data-oriented technology stack, or DOTS for short, entering features like the burst compiler. And then they go ahead and show a picture of the burst inspector, and the guy goes, I love everything about this image. What? I do. I love the Burst Inspector. What is that? So Burst Compiler is apparently going out of preview in 2019.1, which is very exciting. Um, Unity has been focusing on the DOTS release, like Burst Compiler and Entity Component System, or ECS, a lot more for the past year. And it's great to see that they're finally starting to go out of preview as well. And then it was time for Mega City. <laughs> I know, I, I know, calm down. So yeah, Mega City is now released and I'm actually planning a tutorial for it as well as an overview video. So if you guys want me to cover something specifically, if you have anything you feel like you should learn about it, let me know in the comment section down below. So they opened up the Mega City project in Unity on stage and showed 4.5 million renders being well rendered <laughs> and appearing on the screen right so this is possible due to the dots model data oriented technology stack and especially ecs or the entity component system so unity is also partnering up with the havoc team behind havoc physics now havoc is going to work very well with features like burst compiler and connected games in unity so you can use havoc for multiplayer games and optimize them using the data oriented tech stack Grafine is now also joining Unity. I don't know if I say their name right, but Grafine or Grafine is a worldwide leader in graphics engineering, and they're now joining Unity's team of graphics engineers. They also showed the demo that absolutely struck me by shock, the BMW demo for showcasing RTX or real-time ray tracing in Unity. By the way, I gotta say, that's a sexy car right there, BMW. You, I mean, hit me up, I'm down for sponsorships. I mean, even the interior of the car looked amazing, and it was insane to see how this was rendered in real time using Unity. And the whole like premise of the show, of this demo itself, was can you tell which one is real and fake? And they actually hit it right. Like you couldn't tell that this BMW was being rendered in Unity apart from the real life one. And then the heretic, let's go. Yes, I mean, honestly, fangirl, as much as you want to because I'm still doing the same thing. I'm so sorry, but holy crap. When Book of the Dead was released, I just thought to myself like, all right, that's it. They must have reached their limit of some kind. It cannot get better than this. But then they revealed the heretic and it was just mind blowing. I mean, seriously, I don't want to like fanboy in a video like this, but what the actual hell? <laughs> so basically the heretic uses the high definition render pipeline and showcases how you can build realistic characters, environments and post processing using Unity. I think it's also a great demonstration of how you can use Unity for not only games, but for film too. Like, you know what I mean? Because I feel like it's it's a good thing to demonstrate now that Unity is moving into like film and industrial work and all that kind of stuff. But also, can I just say, I absolutely love the music for the trailer. Like, honestly, I would buy the full OST, I'm just saying. By the way, I'm also going to do a very deep dive into the Heretic when it's available, so make sure to subscribe to stay up to tune. So that was all for Unity's show for GDC 2019. Overall, I think GDC has been a blast and I've had so much fun. I'm actually working on a small vlog kind of-ish, video-ish, <laughs> to like show everything that happened, basically. And now, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune for new videos. I'm working on a lot of videos for Mega City, the Heretic, Graphics and Unity and all kinds of content so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the latest news and technologies. I would also like to thank our Patreons for making this video possible to be made including Richard Stance, Kupla, Flu Joey, Academy of Games.com, Terrorrift.com, John Funnel Grid, Couch Ferret, Glasswell Entertainment, and Beard or Die. You guys rock. Now, with that being said, I'm going to be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server. So, I look forward to see you guys there. So, thanks for watching and have a good night. Peace out, guys. From the shadow.